In today's world, if we don't have freedom of speech on the internet, we do not have freedom of speech. In 1996, social media companies by the government, by we the people, by Congress, our representatives, were given protection, liability protection, from anything that anybody posts on their platform with the understanding that they would be neutral. And for years, that was just fine. These companies weren't in the business of censorship. But then the last few years, that's changed. It might be influence from other parts of the world that they have to deal with, their large uh, global companies. And in other parts of the world, the citizens don't, don't enjoy the freedom of speech that we do in the United States. So maybe they're going globalist. Maybe they're caring more about other countries than they do here, even though this is where these companies became such huge successes. But either way, this was the agreement they had. You're protected from liability from what people post as long as you're neutral, as long as you're a platform, not a publisher. Now, these companies have gotten into publishing business banning videos, restricting videos, removing channels, and not even defending themselves, not even giving any reason, leaving no recourse. So for years, I've been saying there needs to be a creator and a commentator, Bill of Rights, to stop this from happening. Well, finally, we got some action with Donald Trump with his executive order preventing online censorship and I really like the way this is uh, written in, in the beginning and, and what it says. So let's go through this uh, draft, but I believe this is the same uh, of what, what he signed. By the authority vested in me as president of the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America, including the Federal Property Administrative Services Act of 1949, as amended 40 USC 101 and 121, which goes without saying, because I know we're, we're all familiar with that. It is hereby offered as follows. Section 1 policy. Free speech is the bedrock of American democracy. Our founding fathers protected this sacred right with the First Amendment to the Constitution. This is what our country is supposed to stand for. We are supposed to stand for freedom. We are supposed to stand for individual rights and liberty. If that is not what our country stands for, then what is? I mean, it really, what is the basis of? Of, of, of our country? What are we supposed to be united on? What, what is our identity? It has to be freedom. It has to be individual rights and liberties. Underscoring that the freedom to express and debate ideas is the foundation for all of our rights as a free people. All the people, every single individual has these rights, should have these rights. The emergence and growth of online platforms in recent years raises important questions about applying the ideals of the First Amendment to modern communications technology. Yes, the First Amendment has to be expanded for today's times. Today, many Americans follow the news, stay in touch with friends and family, and share their views on current events through social media and other online platforms. As a result, these platforms function in many ways as a 21st century equivalent of the public square. We're talking about free speech in the public square. In today's world, these media platforms are the public square. As president, I have made clear my commitment to free and open debate on the internet. I think President Trump and the Republicans actually have been pretty silent on this. Uh, so now that it happened to, ha to him, because recently he had a couple videos with ridiculous Twitter fact-checking warnings um, on them, now he's getting involved. But uh, it, it doesn't seem to me that the Republicans have done much until now. Better late than never. But this is just a executive order. It's temporary. Something permanent needs to happen. But that would have to be passed by Congress. And good luck doing that with the Democrats, which right now are the pro-censorship party. Right now, the Democrats in their current state are the pro-censorship, while the Republicans have been the silent party on this issue. Such debate is just as important online as it is in our universities, where there's also been a lot of censorship, safe spaces, ridiculous crap that should never have been allowed to happen 
and a university. Uni universities are supposed to be where students are taught to think for themselves and discover things. They're not for certain professors to indoctrinate them. And unfortunately, a lot of these universities have become indoctrinating indoctrination centers of, of leftist professors. It's disgusting what, what's happened to our universities, our businesses, our newspapers, and our homes. It is essential to sustaining our democracy. In a country that has long cherished the freedom of expression, we cannot allow a limited number of online platforms to handpick the speech that Americans may access and convey online. This practice is fundamentally un-American and anti-democratic. It's definitely, definitely un-American. Uh, these, these companies that have enjoyed so much wealth and success because of the people of this country uh, then spitting on the values, uh, on the foundational values of this country. It's, it's pretty disgusting, in my opinion. When large, powerful social media companies censor opinions which which they disagree it's not fair and balanced, and it's not even, it's total biased, and censorship is always biased. That's why we don't want censorship. It always becomes biased. There's always hypocrisy involved. They exercise a dangerous power. Online platforms, however, are engaging in selective censorship. It's always selective. That is hurting our national discourse. Tens of thousands of Americans have reported, among other troubling behaviors, Online platforming flagging content is inappropriate, even though it does not violate any stated terms of service. I'm a small time YouTuber and I've had a YouTube ban that didn't violate services and it's, oh, well, screw you. Uh, making unannounced and unexplained changes to policies and extremely vague policies. Oh, we can ban it. Language like if somebody finds it offensive, how does anybody post anything? With, with those kind of guidelines that had the effect of disfavoring certain viewpoints and deleting content and entire accounts with no warning, no rationale, and no recourse. If you do not violate policies, these platforms have no business censoring your content or certainly not banning your channel. What's been allowed to happen has been ridiculous. At the same time, social media platforms are invoking inconsistent, irrational, and groundless justifications to censor otherwise punish American speech here at home. Heck, most of the time they're not even giving any justifications. It's just that, oh, this is the way it is. You're banned. Too bad. Uh, no accountability. Several outline, online platforms are profiting from the promotion the aggression and disinformation spread by foreign governments like China. Google, for example, created a search engine for the Chinese Communist Party, which blacklisted searches for human rights, had data unfavorable to the Chinese Communist Party, and tracked users determined appropriate for surveillance. So media, big tech technology is being used by authoritarian regimes to crush any political dissent. And the technology companies are just going with it. They're, they're just going for, going for the money and saying, okay, we'll, we'll oppress people. We'll, we'll trample on their rights. We'll allow you to continue your authoritarian regime. Google has also established research partnerships in China that provide direct benefits to the Chinese military. For their part, Facebook and Twitter have accepted advertisements paid for by the Chinese government that spread false information about Chinese mass imprisonment of religious minorities, uh, China has committed uh, horrible human rights violations, and they have become a anti-free speech, total totalitarian uh, 1984 nightmare. Twitter has also amplified China's propaganda abroad, including by allowing Chinese government officials to use its platform to undermine pro-democracy protests and Hong Kong, and of course, China just passed this legislation where any protest against China is considered terrorism. Uh, essentially, what we're seeing is, is the end of Hong Kong. I wanted to bring up another issue. I'm an atheist. In the United States of America, nobody cares. I've been an outspoken atheist for a long time. In other parts of the world, outspoken atheists have been butchered in broad daylight 
They've been arrested. There are theocracies that have used big tech to find, identify people, not only who criticize government, criticize their control, but criticize their religion. So this is something uh, very personal. These are my, my people, free thinkers, not people by any ties uh, through ethnicity and country, but ties through thought, ties through philosophy uh, that have been oppressed with the help of, of technology. My commitment to free and open debate on the internet remains as strong as ever. Like I said, I think they've been pretty much absent on this issue until now. Therefore, it remains the policy of the United States that lawful content should be free from censorship in our digital marketplace of ideas. As a nation, we must foster and protect diverse viewpoints in today's digital communications environment where all Americans can and should have a voice. We must seek transparency and accountability from online platforms and encourage standards and tools to protect and preserve the integrity and openness of American discourse and freedom of expression. So I like a lot of the language in this. Now, how much is it really going to mean? Just meaning being an executive order, we'll, we'll see. But we definitely have to, as a country, if we stand, if this is what we stand for, this is what we have to fight for, and we have to win this battle. These are just, per their protection, they're supposed to be communication platforms not publishers. So I hope that most Americans can get together and stop this nonsense. The Americans that are for censorship, I just, to me, they're cowards. To me, they don't believe that their arguments are strong enough to withstand debate. And for me, that makes them cowards. Let the ideas come. May the best argument win. This is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Shishko, do we have to leave all our good friends now? Only until next time, Pancho. Adios, amigos. <laughs>